Are you frustrated with the state of API design, development and testing and believe the DevX can be improved drastically? Well, for example, let's look at gRPC. Many organizations are adopting gRPC for performance reasons but also for its type safe contracts. Via protobuf definitions, gRPC can enforce schema definitions and provide type safety at compile time, eliminating a whole class of problems. With protofile shared between services, you can establish common contracts. There's also built-in support for backward compatibility and forward compatibility. And auto-generated code for both clients and uh, servers in various languages enforces that the data types and structures remain consistent each respective of the platforms or environments, resulting in a much superior developer experience. Correct? Let's see how gRPC's contract safety uh, in action can actually provide you that developer experience. So here what we're looking at is a Proto3 uh, order BFF uh, proto file. And basically we have three RPC methods being exposed, find available products, which basically uh, takes a request and provides you a list of uh, products. Create order, which essentially takes the necessary details for a new order and returns back the successfully created order ID. And similarly, create product, which takes the necessary information for a new product and then returns the product ID, which is created. If we look at the new product itself, it basically has the name, type and inventory. Type itself is a enum uh, which can have these possible values. So let's look at how we can use this. So this is the gRPC web UI which you must be familiar with. Now I am basically looking at the order service and the create product. And let me quickly create a product which is which has a name iPhone uh, and type is gadget and inventory hundred. And as you can see, we've got a successful response back. This was the raw request that was sent and we got the response back. Now, what happens if I do not send any of this information? What do you expect to see? Let's try. Interesting. It's still successfully created product, even though I have basically not given any information so on what basis is creating the product? This does not look like a great developer experience to me. While there isn't a built-in support in gRPC, there are libraries that are available which allows you to define mandatory parameters. Let's look at uh, one of such libraries. As I've updated the same order BFF profile and I'm using the buff validate uh, library, which allows me to basically define what parameters are mandatory, optional. So look at the new product which we were just looking at. Now I have a way to define that the name is mandatory. Uh, the product type is also mandatory, but the inventory is optional. With this, let's go back and make the request again. Okay, so if I try to now make a request without any of these fields, we would expect to see a validation error. Perfect. This is clearly telling us that the name and type is mandatory and we cannot send empty requests and get away with it. Perfect. So this is great. Now let's imagine that the product manager comes along and tells the developer that, hey, there's a super urgent feature we need to ship. And we want to make sure that when someone's creating a product, they can only create the product in packs of three, right? The inventory can only be three. So the developer basically makes changes to the code. Let's look at what kind of changes the developer is going to make to the code. So let's assume I have a domain API service where I have the create product method. And in the create product method, quickly, I have added a check which basically validates if the inventory is a pack of three, a multiples of three. And with this change, now if I go and make the same request again, Let's see what happens. So let's send an inventory of 100 and invoke this. And clearly, this is giving me feedback that inventory can only be multiples of three. Perfect. This is exactly what the business folks wanted. So we've implemented, we can ship this feature. Hang on. We should have got feedback from the proto file that there is no such constraint. 
Now, what you see is your proto file is out of sync with the actual implementation, but the developer is not getting any such feedback. Only the consumers who are going to be consuming this and sending a value as per the proto file would be confused when they get this error. Again, that would not result in a great developer experience. Is there something we can do about this? Certainly. You can run contract tests on this implementation and that would give you feedback your proto file is out of sync with your actual implementation. Let's look at how you can run such contract tests. Okay, so this is an example of a contract test. We're using a framework called Specmatic, which allows us to write the contract test. And what you will see here is essentially we have a setup method and a teardown method. There are no real tests inside these. Those will all be automatically generated by Specmatic for you. All we are telling here is where is the actual service running and the service may be dependent on other services which we want to stub out and Specmatic can also stub that out. So with that, I should be able to go ahead and run these tests. Okay, we can see a whole bunch of tests are now going to get executed. And there we see so Specmatic has run 51 tests out of which two tests have failed. What are those failures? Let's quickly look at that. So what's happened here is Specmatic has sent the request to our server with name, smartphone, type, gadget, and inventory 100. And it's received an error saying that inventory can only be multiples of three. That's correct. That's our implementation. However, there is nothing about this mentioned in the proto file. And so Specmatic is expecting that this should be valid input and it should get a valid response back. However, it's got a failure back and that's why it failed this test. Now, this is great developer experience because the developer will immediately know that there is a mismatch between their implementation and the proto file. This kind of feedback can avoid downstream issues and surprises for the consumers. There you have it how we can improve the developer experience using contract tests.